Hello, Scott from Wessex Blades. This is a, uh, a competition entry for a guy in America and um, what his request was was to teach me something I don't know. Um, and he did mention wild edibles and trees but obviously most people know me for the fact that I do bushcraft and the fact that I make knives. Um, so first thing that comes to mind is I'll try and show you not how to make a knife but how to design a knife. Uh, so we'll go right from the preliminary drawings first, um, identifying the parts of a knife, um, incorporating the features that you're trying to get into your knife, putting them that they flow in a nice seamless sort of design and the geometry works for what you're trying to get your finished product, and uh, then I'll cut it out, okay? Um, because of obviously time, and I'm, I've got just literally two orders this week, what I'm going to use is a piece of stainless, just, just cheap. 3mm stainless, so there it is, a piece of that. Uh, the beauty of this is because the way that stainless is, this is basically a tool still as it is. Uh, there, there's a, there is a bit of spring to it, uh, we won't make it a very large one, so it should be easy to handle. As long as I, um, I'm gentle with cutting it out, I should end up with something that's still very usable, um, and rather than scales, which is the wooden uh, slabs that goes on the two sides for the handles, Rather than scales, I'll just drill two holes, two holes there and there, that would have power cord wrapped around. So I'll find a piece of power cord and I'll do a vague wrap around like that so you'd have a functional handle and hopefully a functional knife. So I'll maneuver the camera down to a little table and hopefully, this is for Brian, we'll go through how to not just make a knife but design one. So I'll see you in a while. Scott for this place. Hello there, welcome back to a a very rickety table balanced on my knees okay um, what I'm going to go through is the fact that we've got this very basic piece of stainless steel okay it's about that thick so we're looking he's only two and a half to three mil thick okay and he's only this deep so the design of the knife will have to take into account the fact that it is it's flexible it's not very thick and it's quite deep it's not the deepest thing in the world okay so some knives will be too um, deep a blade shape to get your design drawn on here okay and fit it all in so we've got to, you know not got to be careful but we've got to consider what we're starting off with to begin with now if you're a good drawer you literally could get a pen get a paper draw what you want and you're off you go okay now I'm not the best drawer in the world but I could literally get a piece of paper okay get a pen draw on what I want blow it up lay it on the the, the uh, actual stock and grind out to that I've done that before but let's go through different blade shapes and the reason why we'll probably end up with the design that we get because of the material we started off with which is this quite the um, it's got some spring in it, okay. So we've got to consider it's very thin. So what we're looking at is how much stock are we going to remove, which is on that steel. Now, if we had something like this, the end, it's got a sheep's foot sort of feel to it, okay. And you can just imagine a sheep's hoofy foot coming off the end. That's what that looks like, okay. Um, as you come down to there, the actual stock would have to be that big to begin with. This big to begin with. Even though we end up this fin over here. Because we're not forging it, we're removing it. So if we were going to have a blade shaped like this galock, okay, we're going to be removing a lot of material to come to there. Consider how the handle's going to look. And then something other than the, the beach block handles because we're going for a power cord but that is a very useful basic shape so something like that would be quite useful as is this, this is the um, British MOD sort of Webtex looking blade, there's a, a no will guy does it as well um, very little remove there there would be our original piece of stock and only a little removed there 
something like that wouldn't be too much trouble to get out of that um, that piece of steel. Now here is one, one candidate I'm, I'm quite happy to um, endorse. It's a true flight thrower from cold steel. This is one tough little knife. Okay, so something like this is very useful. And if you have a look at these little bits here, they're acting as a sort of um, a guard effect, some description. So when you're using the knife, your fingers have something to stop up against, so they don't go up and along and slide along the edge. Okay, but if those are high, we've got to remove material all the way along there and at the end, all the way off of this to there. So built into the steel design, how we're going to draw on there. That's how thick we were to start with, and all this has to be removed. Two holes, a very, very simple handle. There's hardly any belly to this at all. There's hardly any pommel or butt to this at all. So, in terms of what we've got, we could put more into the design than what this thing shows. Because if you consider that that might be the stock to begin with, you've still got a bit to play with here. Okay? But when we offer up the steel to that, we've got more to play with, haven't we? So we could have a very simple front end, which would be there. We could have something slightly more pronounced here and here and even a bit to play with on the end we could have a nice sort of swell at the back end or if we were able to offset it we could have a belly to the handle and that dropped in that pommel okay so look at a couple more knives and then we'll try and get on to some drawing now this is a very very simple knife from cold steel right this is the spear point machete um, and as you can see it's had a lot of removed there a lot removed there and this top sort of clip spear point area has also been sharpened so that thing there is called a swedge okay so that there has actually got an edge on it that's very good for stabbing and piercing not very good when you want to hit the top of the knife across the spine to batten through wood so in terms of bushcraft it's not the best thing in the world it also weakens the tip so it's more of a fighting a blade but if you have a look at this handle here a very simple cut out has created a handle now that could be square this little bit at the end this rear back end here that could be just square and still serve, say it served the same purpose so in terms of what you've got to do to cut it out cut there cut there stops about maybe there and you could cut all this out here for that stainless look how thick he is and it bends this copes of it you know I'm, I'm actually you might be able to pick that up I'm bending that knife quite happily there something like that stainless would give you the performance of something like this which moves me on to my favourite knife if you've been watching my uh, videos over the last two years and you look at the sheer wear on this thing this is what I go out with most of the time but if you look at the stock the handle is in the middle of the blade it's a leaf shaped blade okay because it's a barong machete now if we were clever with our stock, it's not quite as big, no, but if we instead of having the top of the blade level with the top of the handle, we could migrate the handle to the middle of the stock and allow ourselves a slightly offset blade. So the blade's over here, the handle is in the middle. So I fancy doing something like it with that sort of handle which is paracord and then as much of a rear end as possible to stop your hand slipping and let, letting go of the blade that is amazing I've used this for two years and never even come close to letting it go okay something like that or these discs on this true flight thrower so sort of, sort of from ramps there something like that a bit of a belly more, more of a belly in the handle, more like this than this one. And it's just some hint 
of something at the bottom that gets close to what that is because quite honestly that is a brilliant idea on the back of that knife so let's get back to the steel okay here we go again so here's our steel it's getting a bit shiny so it does the contrast is going on the camera now a permanent marker works great on uh, steel and drawing like that you could blue it put engineers blue on and then scribe through with um, an engraver or a scribing tool but I've got chalk handy and chalk even on this oily steel you make a mark and you can see that and when you make a mistake you just rub it straight back off again so it's a useful way of doing a blade design so now if we were trying to remember what we were trying to get on with we were looking for a handle at the back that looked as much like this as possible this is the spear point but that barong shape we had was set like that so the handle would have been dropped down more in the middle so let's try and consider if that's the handle also I'm looking for you to viewfinder here I want an end So there's my handle, slightly lower than the end of the steel. Okay, so I've got something to stop my finger flying off the end. Now one little tip I use for drawing a parallel line should just be to catch it is actually try and turn my hand into a marking gauge so if that's what that is I set my two fingers holding the chalk and the middle finger there and the middle finger goes up against the metal they're holding the chalk or a pencil I go like this and literally just go ready, steady like a marking gauge so I've set the distance and just draw it up, keep my hand in that position locked and just glide my fingers up the edge of the metal. So I've done a very straight line and then if I'm clever I can do that with my finger and erase the chalk I don't want. So that's the top of my handle. I could fiddle with this later but you can see what I'm getting on, see what I'm doing. Okay, now I could get some of that stock back in terms of strength and somewhere in that handle I could just put those discs off that true flight thrower. So that would come up to there. And I could do that. That was a little long. I could adjust that. So I could rub it out. Something like that. Something like that. Do I like the look of it? Nah. I like going something a bit more radical. Looking good. I like that. Or do I just literally go straight up? That goes there. And at the business end, how long are we going to make this thing? Not quite 12 inches, I think 9. So we can go for a spear point, or we gotta go for a R-Tac 2 sort of look. I'll just go for an R-Tac, so down like that. There we go. That looks like a sort of looks a bit sort of a ranger. There we go. Right. So here we go, trying to cut this shape out. Now, there's my shape there. I've got my chalk in case I rub it out again. Okay, so it's a, just about visible. That's what I'm going to cut out. Okay, let's just go back over it again. And in terms of the paracord holes, I'm looking at about 3 mil paracord, so I'll use a 4.5 or something drill. Because um, the time you do the knot up, you might end up with about six. So I'm going to do that straight away. And make sure that you use 
centre punch. So actually ding the dent in the start of the hole. Okay, so I've got a, a an automatic centre punch, it's sort of a punch push plunge thing. So I want that there. That there. Okay. It's in there. Get the drilling goggles on. Got some cutting compound. And I got a four and a half mil cobalt steel drill bit. So, a bit of cutting com compound there to keep it cool. So there's my two holes. So now I'm going to take the angle grinder with the cutting disc and then remove the material. But here's another top tip from me. There's angle grinder cutting discs as angle grinder grinding discs. Now this is a cutting disc because it's straight. Okay. When they got that belly in them, they're grinding discs. Cutting discs go onto the material and you cut them that way. Grinding discs you use on the side and do them this way. So if we were in there and your material was like this, a cutting disc you use like this on its end. Okay? A big old grinding disc has a depressed center. So and you do that with it to remove material. Okay, so I'm going to be cutting. So I'm using the end of the disc and going like that. These are really cheap cutting discs, so they're, they're not very thin, they're very thick. Uh, it's just the budget ones I use at the moment, so I'm a bit short of trash, a bit short of cash, but the ones that got the sort of UFO shape are grinding discs. I'll see in a bit. rough shape out and now what I'm going to do is grind it so it's nice and smooth take all these sharp corners off get all the, the burrs on that off of there and that and then I'm going to put a rough edge from there to there using the grinder now why do I do it is I got a drill vise that I put in this vise I hold it all horizontal like that so that the blade to me is that way on Alright, so I'll get grinding, and obviously the other way grinding is on a belt grinder. And I've got my little naffy bracket I got there, which helps me to put an edge on here. So I'm going to tidy it up. Dipping it in the water there, keep it cool. Doing this bit this way allows me to get that exactly the way I want it because sometimes doing it sideways on, on, a, on a disc sander you're not able to get the right profile 
I always find it easier to, use, to do that and then remove the material there we, you can see I need to take that a bit out there I always find it slightly easier to do it on that one Now what I've done is I used a combination of the angle grinder or the grinding pad on, which is this sort of um, flap disc thing, and basically knife like that. I've just gone along. Where's the camera? Is it? I've just gone along like that, and the other side like this. In order to put coarse bevel on it and then that can you see all those straight lines vertical lines that's the disc going like this and then that top edge which is a different looking line that sort of two millimeters of silver you can see there that's on a stone so I'm going over to the stone which I've mounted in a vise should be able to see it right there there we go got a drop of oil on it and what I'm doing is, I'll do it about the front so you can see. I'm going like that, like that, and then back the other way. And I'm trying to involve that front leading edge as well, so I'm a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So I'm creating a, a smaller cutting edge at the end of that one that I used a grinder on. Right, let me back to you in a minute because it's easier that way. I started to get a vague edge, I don't know if it'll cut yet. A piece of paper, it's a way to prove it. Probably about halfway there yet, but we'll see how it goes. Nah, not yet. Almost. So I reckon if I give this another 20 minutes, I'll come back and that will have a nice stoned edge on it. So I'll see less than 20 minutes on. actually. So now I've got a, a cutting edge. You see that? Ooh, there we go. Okay, so just in terms of me showing how to do it, it's got an edge on it now. So what we're going to be doing next is now I know that that edge is done. Okay, I, c I can get that an edge better at any point by using the stone again. So that as a knife, as a blank, is done. All we've got to do now is get the power cord through the handles. I might have to open these up a little bit yet, yeah, I don't know if I can get... You use two lengths of power cord 
and you, get, you actually jam both of them through the same hole. So the four and a half might not be bigger yet. But just before you put the power cord through, you want to get if that's a, a sort of four and a half mil hole, there's a nine mil high speed still. What I'm going to do is just deburr that hole a tiny amount. So I'm just going to sit here and go like that, or you can use a countersink bit. Okay, because what you don't want is a sharp edge on that hole with string going through and kinking around and eventually you'll wear through the, the, the power cord. So you just give that a bit of a, a deburr on both sides and you just give it a nice sort of um, countersink bevel so there's no sharp edges on that stone, on that hole. Like that. And then I'll show you, a, a, well, my easy way of doing a power cord wrap. Right, a bit. I won't be able to quite jam the uh, power cord with the melted ends because you've got a, because it's artificial, big lumpy ends. So I've opened the holes at the 4.5. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got a really old driller. It's the um, Chuck's knackered on it. So with a bit of cutting compound, every now and again the, the drill actually spins in the in the chuck. So bear with me a minute. I'm out of gear. So. Doesn't want to draw very slowly this old draw. Right, go from the other side. <laughs> I need a pillar drill. <laughs> Things you can achieve in hardly any year. Alright, so now I've got five and a half mil holes, which means I should be able to get both bits of power cord through. So I'll just counter sync those a second. Back in a bit. Okay, right. I've had a fiddle with the lights to try and get this so you can see what I'm doing. Um, basically, every stage I do on this side, it's the same the other side. You just can't see it at the moment. So I've got my two lengths of power cord. Um, I've got about like seven feet. I think you'll probably get away with about four and a half, five feet. Um, but anyway, so I've, the way I've hopefully worked out is the knife goes in that way up. I'll end up there. I'm going to start in this hole. So I poke them through on each side. So he goes through and hangs down. The other one comes through this side. Now there's a bit of a bit of a poke and a fiddle, but if you jam it in and pull that string, you sort of help it through. There we go. Now this comes through and stops about there. Same the other side. So that comes through and stops mirror image on the back. Then we start doing the wrap. Now it starts off long and awkward, but every time you do one of these knots and you do a twist, what you want to do is make sure that the power cord behaves himself and, and you've got a fiddle and keep it in the middle, right? So there's two ends. Bring one round, okay? Like that. So I'll do a knot the other side and then bring it round the front so you can see. Okay, now this is one you can see. So there's my loose ends. So, after they come round, it's just over and over and over the same knot, okay? It's come round, you've bunched it up, keep that tag end straight down the middle at the back and at the front, and here it comes. Here comes a power cord, quite tight. You get to there, you cross it over, and then you twist it. Okay, so they come from my other side, Bullseye that thing in the middle, there, it crossed, and you twist it, again, keeping it tight, 
you can move it around and get it in the middle. That goes there, bunch it up, and then go around the back and do the same. So I'm going to get that tight, I cross over. I'll see long taggy ends here, going like that. Yep. I'm going to fiddle with that, get it straight, bunch it up, back around the front, to there, and cross it over, move the knot, tidy it up, use those bits there to bunch it up, back around the other side, same again, they cross, and twist. That goes there, that goes there, if I'm not happy with it, I can twist it, I can actually move the knot, I'll show you on the other side in a second, that goes back into the middle, okay, let's say I made a bit of a mistake, I'll show you on this side what i just done, so that goes there, I make sure that my middle goes in there, so I've really tugged that about, and got that straight, that goes to there, I've twisted it, and held it. And let's say my knot slipped. Okay, so my knot went too far that way. I just pull the knot back the other way. You might be a zoom in. See if I can zoom in. Hit the record button. So. And come on, stupid camera. There we go. Okay, right. Right. So I've done my knot. And let's say you've made a mistake and it's gone too far that way, I just tug the knot back. I just tug it backwards and forwards until I get it to where I want. And once I've got it, okay, go around the other side. Now there's loads and loads and loads and loads of ways of doing this. There's another one that's very similar to this, but you actually go back over the other side and you go over instead of under. So it's like the, the back to front version of what this thing's. I like this one. Okay, you, you, once you start learning how to do this power cord stuff, you're, uh, you know, you, you've opened up a real, what sort of smorgers board of ways of doing it. There we go. Back and round. Back and round. I'll try to do that side up a bit, he's a bit loose. Okay, he's wandered. There we go. Again, so I'll turn it, crossed it over, bunching it up, back on the other side, turned it over. Like that, crossed it over. Oop, he slipped away. Yeah, and obviously pulling it up like that. I'll get that one done. Okay, see you in a bit. Right, so we've got to the bottom. This is the bit where my knots um, aren't brilliant. Okay, and there's there's guys who've already done you um, tutorials on doing knots, but basically I just put one side through. Do do do. There it is. And it's right at the point where the power cord is almost blocking it the other side. So hopefully I could just about squeeze it through. Might be able to undo the knot. I'll lift the knot up out of the way. So there's a bunched knot on the back of that hole. Yeah. So I'll put that through. And then try and bring that knot that was on the back there. So now the knot that was there is bunched on the back of that hole. And you just do literally 
a big knot on the back of there. See what I'm doing in a minute. So not upon not upon not upon not. light shine around my face. So you should be able to see that. There's my power cord wrap handle and then at the back here I just do a series of knots, big loop, and a series of knots there and then cut it off so you end up with a lanyard at the end. So there we go. Hopefully you've learned something. So I'll zoom out again from my face uh, my face fills the screen too much. It's getting late at night, it's a bit of a horror movie. But uh, here we go. Stainless knife, a power cord handle. Okay. Ground off. As I say, the tempering and the hardening really need to bother because it's just a piece of stainless steel. Uh, if I get a piece of wood, it does alright. How are we doing? Okay. So there's a piece of wood, there's what we've done. A functioning knife. So hopefully you've learned something. All the best to all the uh, other entrants. Amazing paracord stuff, there are knots and things. So my brain just can't get used to it. I can't get my head around it like the knots. Okay, so that's about the limit of what I can do for knots. Paracord wrap. All the best. See ya, Scott from Wessex Blades in England.